This is Tim DeLay with using windowshomeserver.com. Over the last couple of months, I've been talking with Christopher Lux with Home Server Show Podcast and talking about what it would take to build a miniature Windows Home Server. Well, tonight we're going to start the build. I'm starting off with a mini ITX acrylic case, so we'll be able to see exactly what's inside it. This ITX case supports 60 millimeter fans, 150 watt power supply, five and a quarter inch bay and a three and a half inch bay. So this will have everything that we need and you'll see during the course of the build exactly how this works. For our motherboard, we're starting off with the Intel Atom D510 motherboard. This has the Atom processor. It has two memory slots, one PCI slot, and supports everything that we need for the build. Unfortunately, it only has two SATA ports and we'll talk about that right now. I'm going to be adding into the PCI slot this four PCI high-speed controller card, and this will give us the extra slots that we need to add in additional drives. I'm using this StarTech three and a half inch to two and a half inch adapter. This is really cool. You'll see it in just a moment how this works. I have a three and a half inch to five and a quarter inch bracket adapter, which you'll see. And finally, a Data DDR800 two gigabyte RAM chips. Uh, I bought these specifically because they were blue and would look cool in the case. So we'll start this build and we'll be back in just a minute. So here is our actual case. I'm doing the unwrapping now, doing it from the rear first, which is always the way you should do this. You can see this is such a pretty, pretty case. And notice I don't have the white gloves on that I so much praised before because I'm just doing a partial unwrapping. This case is very pretty. In fact, if I could figure out a way to put goldfish in it, I would do it. Now that we have the IO shield installed, we're going to install the motherboard itself. Move this up. The motherboard, you can see, has the built-in CPU. You have to make sure that you orientate it the correct way. So I'm going to very carefully put it down on the existing spots. And you want to make sure that when you do this that all of your holes line up and that everything is done correctly. So you want to come in at an angle and you want to make sure that you fit within where the ethernet is and with your board. When everything lines up, all of the holes should line up and everything should fit in exactly according to plan as it does there. Now we're going to install the screws and we'll get that taken care of. Okay, we're just getting ready to start the power supply. However, uh, since it's getting a little cramped in here, since this is mini ITX, I'm gonna throw the RAM in first. I uh, usually wait till later to do this, but since again, it's getting a little cramped in here, I'm going to throw in everything first. Now I have access to both sides, so it's pretty straightforward, but I am going to put it in. Okay, now we're set with that. I have my power supply here. It's ready to go. This is the one that came with the board. So I just set it inside. And I put the screws in. Now again, it's starting to get really crowded in here. I was expecting this, of course. So before I start this, I'm actually gonna pull it out and throw in my PCI card. Now with this case, I do not have an actual PCI slot. So what I'm gonna to have to do is disassemble the card and use the PCI slot strictly as an internal piece. So we'll be right back and we'll get that taken care of. Okay, so I've unwrapped my PCI expansion card, and you can see that I have my two SATA ports here, and I actually have an eSATA port on the back. Now I'm only gonna be using the actual two internals. 
The reason is, is because you can see on the motherboard here, I only have two SATA ports. So I'm going to undo this. I'm going to grab a screwdriver and I'm going to disconnect it from the board. Yeah, that's nice. Now that I've done this, I will just connect the PCI card to the board. Ouch. Okay, so, yeah, so that's really cool. So I've got this nice eSATA that's actually <laughs> blocked by the case. But hey, that's cool. I didn't need that anyway. So let's get back to what we were doing. So we're here. Now we're going to put the power supply in. So here we go. Set the power supply in. Line up the holes, which actually are quite easy. Okay, I've got the wiring going. I have two SATA connections. For power. I've got my four prong which I'm not going to use and then over here on the side I've got my fan connectors which I'm just going to leave over there for now. Uh, the Intel D510 motherboard comes with this really cool sticker uh, that shows you exactly what's going on with the back I.O. panel and all of your connections. So you can see here we have parallel port which I'm not using. We have serial 1-2. Most importantly though we have the front panels for USB and the front panel for my LEDs and the lights that we have. So I'm going to connect those and get this all taken care of. Okay, I'm gonna flip it around now so it's easier for me to work on. So let's do it this way. I've got my four connectors that I'm gonna feed through over here. On this side, I have my reset. I have my reset, I have my hard drive LED, I have my power, and I have my existing cables all ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect all of these to here. So they're all pretty much straightforward. Um, again, you wanna have all your additional cables out of the way. So what we're going to do is work on exactly how these get connected. So my on off, which is this one, again, you'll see positive and negative. Uh, it's hard to see with a camera, but you can actually see a diamond here. So that's going to be your indicator. So we'll hook that one up. The next thing we have is our power LED, which is our green. So we're going to have positive and negative here. Negative being the bottom one, so I'm going to connect those. Those are now connected. I have two more left. I have yellow and I have purple bluish. So yellow will be positive. Again, yellow being the positive part, so we'll connect that on. That's ready to go. And then finally the purple one, which will be my reset. So now we have all of these cables ready to go. I will pull these back into the case. Uh, once you do cases like this, you're pretty much stuck with wherever they go. So we'll get that taken care of. And we're on to our next step.